Shelsta and your guest, I mean your host, Sean Itton. How are you today, Sean? Great, Jerry. How are you, pal? Uh, great. Excited because I got a good friend of mine, actually probably my oldest friend um, ever, Scott Melman, who's going to be joining us on the show. A phenomenal entrepreneur, a very successful man, big, big in the community, great father of two, just a wonderful human being. At the age of 43, suffered a massive stroke. And because of this, we've actually been reunited. We actually grew up on the same street, Barbary Lane in Tarzana, California, playing baseball together, just hanging out as best friends. And it took for us to kind of reconnect, reunite. So we're going to bring on Scott right now and let him kind of share his story with us. But this guy is just... I can't speak more than enough. He's been a mentor. He's a friend and just a wonderful human being. Hey, Scott. Hey, Sean. Hi there. Thank you guys very much. Sean, I do have to correct you. I did not have a stroke. I had a massive heart attack three years I ago. Heart. I, I said stroke. I'm sorry. I meant heart attack. I meant, I'm sorry. That, that, yeah. that, that, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, no stroke. No, you're right. That was just me. <laughs> My bad. Right, right. Nope. I said I had a stroke. Well, I meant heart attack. You know, you get a pretty big heart. So, Scott, why don't you share with us a little bit about your what happened to you, kind of like walk us through uh, the events, because you're on top of the world. You were very healthy, very successful. And all of a sudden, life dealt you this this heart attack out of absolute nowhere. I mean, literally, I was holding my baby who was five, five months old and I was under a lot. Of stress. I was under pressures, you know, life. Every, everyone has their own stresses, pressures. Every, I, I look at things as everything's relative. And um Standing holding my baby, it was 5 p.m. Wednesday night before Thanksgiving 2014, and I broke into a massive sweat. And I was there with my cousins, and his kids were playing. And he looked at me and said, looked at me and just said, what happened? And I looked at him, and I went, I have no idea. And I fought it and fought it and fought it and ignored all the pains that were going on right here, literally the elephant on the chest. And at 4.30 in the morning, I finally broke and called 911. And by 6 a.m., I was in surgery, not knowing what was happening. And three hours later, when the doctor pulled back the curtain and I said, what happened? He said, he'll, he'll tell me in a few days because I'm going to be there a few days. And I looked at him with the strangest face, like, what are you talking about? Wow. Well, about two hours later, I'm in, the, in intensive care and I looked at my sister and I said, what happened? And she read the notes verbatim. As oh. you can take. You got to talk now. Sorry, I got choked up. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. I mean, we're talking about Bob. Dad, your dad came in and kind of talked to you. You told him, how was that? Remember Sorry, what was that, Sean? Your dad, you said when your dad came in, you guys were in tears. You guys were emotional. Bob came in, your father. Once you had the heart attack. It, it was everybody. It was my mother, my father. All of my best friends were there. Um, it was just a surreal experience. It, it really is. I mean, you go through life and you kind of feel like this, this person that it's, impenetrable you, you no one could break you no one could do anything to you you control everything it's in your mind well yeah. to have an experience that literally makes you feel unbelievably mortal that's pretty much the, the, the yeah. way i put it world of mortal. So, so now we're victims of this so how did you how did you take the heart attack and what did you do what changed your life now post the heart attack perspective perspective expectations living every day I mean, being thankful and putting things into perspective about what I have, what I do, what brings me pleasure, focusing so much on that as opposed to what I don't have, what I'm working towards, what I wow. need, what I want. It's not about that anymore. That's amazing. So, so it's, not about, it's not about chasing something. You're living now in like the moment, right? I'm living much more in the moment. I still have a tremendous amount of goals, a tremendous amount of things I want to do with my life. But I'm right. a lot more content in my everyday activities and, and just, just an overall happier person. Wow. Okay, kind of let's talk a little bit about you and I together on the same screen. We're the best childhood friends. Better. I was right behind you, but I missed all that, Sean. You're breaking Sean, up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You kind of uh, you kind of digitized. I think what uh, Sean was asking, Scott, was having to do with now that you've reconnected after his stroke, after your heart attack, what's kind of taken place and what's the new relationship you now have as adults and as people who, who've been recovering or have recovered from these massive tragedies? When I look at Sean Enston, I feel like I'm seven years old and I love it. 
I absolutely love it. I mean, what he said about Barbary Lane, the memories that go back, mm -hmm. the times of, again, what mattered. Today, there's so many of the things that matter. What mattered when Sean and I were seven? Or will our will mm -hmm. we find our gloves quick enough to play baseball? Will there be a basketball that's not flat? That's the type <laughs> of stuff that I like to relate with Sean. It just, it just keeps things simple and reminds me, you know, what used to bring us so much pleasure and now what brings us so much pleasure as adults. And just the reconnection, the, you know, thinking about how we're going to be to be connected now forever going forward because of these That's events. Beautiful. We have such a bond. Yeah. And, beautiful. Yeah. I mean, we both basically died and we came back, Scotty, you know. I know you always tell that to me and, and it's, it's unbelievable because I don't feel it. I don't feel the metal in my heart. I don't feel the, it, it, it's just weird. It's weird. I've got the color back in my face. It, it feels great. No, I mean, I mean, you look, you look, you look amazing. I mean, Thank you. your life is now turned, but if you had to talk to somebody, if you walk through a hospital right now and you talk to uh, someone who's, uh, the, the, you know, survived a heart attack or a stroke or cancer, what, I mean, besides telling them to live in the moment, what advice can you give that person who just literally is coming off it within minutes? I probably won't be able to talk because you almost made me cry with that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. So, um, it, once I gathered myself and, and real and, and, and was okay, I, I would just tell them to take deep breaths. And life, life is going to get back to normal and everything will be fine. Just focus on what's really important to you. Mine was my kids. That was it. Yeah. Yeah, mine too. I, I've I met your daughter. She is astounding. She's gorgeous. I Thank met you. your son too. I mean, beautiful family, Scotty. You really you've done you've done really well for your life, and proud Thank of you. But so, listen. Let me ask you one question. How can people if people want to reach out to you, either say hi or just get some advice? How can they find you? Facebook, easy. Okay. My Perfect. phone. Uh, Facebook is the best way. That, I mean, that's and pretty that, much human dictionary. Here, let's post his. Let's post his link to Facebook, and that's just Scott Melman, right? Yep. Yeah, I mean, well, Scotty, yep. thank you. But I guess we're out of time here soon. But together for lunch, let's go relive our experiences together. Can't wait. Love doing it. And you're my mentor. I love you, buddy, so much. And thank you for love joining us. Thanks, for, having on. Thanks Scott, Scott, for being on. We really appreciate it. We'll talk again. We'll have you on again. Thank you for your time. Look forward to it. All right. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Sean. Bye bye. Okay, buddy. We'll catch up. Bye bye. All right, Sean. You can take us out, buddy. He's amazing. Like I said, you listen to Scott Melman. He survived a massive heart attack, not, uh, not a stroke. I got caught up in my own thing. But the point with him is to live in the moment. You know, we're always chasing something. The something we're chasing is actually right in front of us. It's right here, right now. And Scott Melman, like I said, I can, I shall, I will. It's not about why I need, it's about what's next. And Scott Melman is a legend with that. You know, he said, what's it like to be immortal to mortal? We have a lot to learn from this guy, and hopefully he'll come back with us. And uh, but he's just an amazing soul, and I'm blessed to have him on the show. Thanks, Jerry. And the best way to reach us, Seanetton.com. Contact us. We want to know your story, and and if you're not alone out there, come join us. We'll help you get through all this. And please share. Thank you, Sean. Have a good one, sir. Thank you, Pat.